Hello, I'm Brian Licorelli, director of our private client services group and co-chair of our family offices team at Foley and Lardner. And today I'm here with Cliff Reisman, a partner and member of our real estate practice and co-chair of the firm's hospitality and leisure industry team. Uh, welcome, Cliff. Thank you. And, Thank you for having today me. Today we're going to discuss investments in the hospitality industry. But Cliff, before we get started, I think it'd be helpful for our audience if you would share a little bit of your professional background before we um, jump right into it. Sure. So I'm a real estate lawyer by training uh, for about the last 25 years or so. My practice has focused on the hospitality space. We help clients buy, sell, finance, and operate hospitality assets, and that can include hotels, resorts, golf, and other recreational amenities and restaurants. That's perfect. So you helped set me up with about three questions that I'm going to run you through and we're going to tap into your expertise. So kind of question one, can you please briefly describe why hotels are a unique asset class and in particular, why they're different than other real estate uh, assets and holdings? Sure. In I mean, the simplest way to say it is that hotels are an operating business, and that does make them significantly different from and more complex than other real estate asset classes. Um, you know, we, we joke a little bit amongst our team members that we have a lot of clients who have made an awful lot of money in the real estate business in other asset classes. And for one reason or another, decided to get into the hotel asset class and have lost a lot of that money. And that, that doesn't mean necessarily it's, it's, it's a bad, you know, area to invest in. It's just different. And for example, a few items, you know, hotels as operating businesses have employees. Now, typically in the real estate industry, folks have some employment issues, but they don't deal with an entire staff of employees from general managers to, to maids to cooks. There are union collect, collective bargaining issues more on the coasts and in the major cities than say in the midwest but a lot of hotels are unionized oftentimes the manager of a hotel is legally the employer of those employees but at the end of the day the liability whether it's payroll benefits uh, litigation and employment claims all does rest with the owner of the asset hotels typically have a food and beverage component, and that's everything from dealing with, uh, you know, uh, chefs who who put their name on assets and and operate the restaurants, and you have ego issues, to liquor issues and liquor licensing and dram shop liability for claims. Right. Um, hotels typically, although some are independent, they involve a brand. And, and, you know, whether the, the owner of that brand, Marriott Hyatt Hilton, is, is actually the operator of the hotel or just a franchisor of the brand, uh, every asset is different, but it's usually a little bit of a triangular relationship between a brand, right. between an owner, and between the operator or manager. And so it's, it's more complex than if you had a a warehouse or a shopping center where someone owns it, they hire a property manager and collect the rent every month. Right. No, uh, great insight. And so that's a good segue into the next question. And you mentioned employees. Um, and that remains a challenge in today's environment, but also COVID was not very nice to the hotel and hospitality industry. And so I guess, where is the hotel industry coming out of COVID? How do you see that today? Yeah, look, w w without going back and talking about what's happened over the last two, two and a half years, because everyone knows the hotel industry, the restaurant industry were hit harder than so many other industries. It's been a long slog. You know, whether you say we're done with COVID, we're coming out of COVID, uh, the recovery has occurred in the industry, but Frankly, it is it, it has been a very uneven recovery. You read about high-end resorts 
setting records for valuations and all their operating metrics. Drive to uh, resorts have done better than those that folks have to fly to. The other part of the industry that has recovered very quickly is the extended stay part of the industry. Whether that was uh, nurses, doctors, others moving around and staying in those facilities, whether it was were people who, for one reason or another, couldn't go home, had to stay somewhere else, the extended stay product with kitchens and typical longer duration of stay bounced back a lot faster. The hmm. segment of the industry that is really still struggling and unfortunately may continue to struggle for some time or what I call the big box hotels, the meeting hotels, the places that firms like ours might send all of their people to for a weekend. Um, we all know what's happened to the meeting business. It's coming back, but slowly. And okay. frankly, many people will tell you may never be the same again, because a lot of businesses learned through the pandemic that with technology, they don't need to go through the expense and lost productivity of bringing all their people to one location, whether it be once a year or every two years. And so there are questions whether that area of the industry will ever come back to what it was three years ago. That's a great point. So, okay, final question for you, and it's a big softball crystal ball one, but so where, where you talked a little bit about where you saw coming out of COVID, but where do you see kind of the industry going forward? And and clearly for potential family office or family investors, buying something that was built for these biz, big business conferences may not be the way to go forward, but where are you kind of seeing things going forward? Yeah, I, I, I... I mean, look, if I could really answer that question, I'd be I'd be in the wrong line of work. But um, <laughs> uh, look, with the potential recession, rate hikes happening and being forecasted to to happen further, what's happened with construction costs, there's a lot of uncertainty. Generally speaking, um, new build hotel assets. I suspect there will not be as many for a long time. The pipeline will diminish, whether that's because of the debt markets, construction pricing. Uh, it, it, there's a lot more investment activity and forecasted investment activity in buying existing assets. Um, there are a lot, how, that having been said, there are a lot of expenditures upcoming for the owners of existing assets. During COVID, a lot of capital expenditures, expenditures needed to comply with the, the brand standards were put on hold. And a lot of lenders actually forbeared. You know, the lenders learned during the financial crisis, they don't necessarily want to own hotels. And this time around, because it was driven by a pandemic, it was not a situation absent where there was a bad actor or fraud. This was not a situation where a lender could take an asset back and reposition it or do a better job than the prior owner or the prior manager because it was a pandemic. Nobody could do better. So there was a lot of extension of debt, moratoriums of payments, and that's all coming due. There's a hmm. lot of CMBS debt in the market that's coming due. There are all these capital expenditures that are going to have to be made. And in an environment where debt markets are really tight, I do think you will see a lot of distressed hotels, existing distressed hotels that may be a good investment opportunity for folks that understand the industry, have capital to invest. Um, you know, there was, I'll, I'll just close with this. Um, when the pandemic hit, all the prognosticators predicted this rash of foreclosures, receiverships, and it really, some of it happened, but it did not happen to, to the magnitude that was projected for the reasons I said, the lenders would rather kick the can down the road and work with their borrowers than end up owning these assets. But I do suspect 
that that will change as CMBS debt come, comes due, significant capital expenditures are required. I, I do think a lot of assets will change hands and the the best opportunities for outsized returns may be in those areas where the industry hasn't yet com, come back. And, you know, those big box meeting hotels at the right price, they still work because the, the luxury. Yeah, the luxury assets, when you look at the cap rates and the values, they're trading at historically high values. And I don't know that the yields are there for the people buying them, but they may well be there for the assets that have not come back as quickly. Absolutely great points. Uh, clearly an education for me. And Cliff, I want to thank you for your time today and certainly your insights. I know our audience will have appreciated it. And I want to thank all of you that tuned into our presentation. For more information, please visit us at Foley.com under Family Offices. Thank you again, Cliff. Thank you for having me.